Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Comedy. My name is Gary Michaels and each week I upload three tutorial videos on performance and comedy. If you are starting out in your comedy career, then this is the channel for you and this episode is extra special. Until now, I have had this video, the MC Workshop, online for sale. That is until, of course, today when I have decided to put it up on this channel for all of you to enjoy. What you're about to see is a step-by-step -step detailed instructional video regarding everything you will encounter as a comedy MC. There is a lot of information to get through on this video. Do be sure to grab a paper and pen. You will need it. Take notes as we go along. And if you get high value from this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out in a future release. With that being said, it's an absolute pleasure to put this out there on the YouTube platform for all of you to enjoy. I have been an MC for 19 years now and that role has opened up many doors in my career and I hope it can do the same for you. Implement as much as you can from this video into your own MC style and you will benefit from it. Without any more teasing, here is the workshop, enjoy. These are the sections we are going to be covering in detail. First off, we're going to dissect a little bit more information about what exactly an MC is and what the responsibilities are. Next, we're going to be looking at the beginning of your night in the venue, the front of house presence, what to do, how to set yourself up right from the moment you enter the building to the moment the doors open. After that, we are going to dive into the introduction of the entire show from the moment you grab the microphone, how to get the whole audience on your side as quick as possible to gain energy and focus for the whole night. We're going to look at that in detail. Also in this section, we're going to look at the introduction of the show. The first thing you say in the microphone, it's really, really important. You get off on the right foot. We're going to look at ways you can set yourself upright so you do that all the time. Furthering more into that section, we're going to look at how to get the audience even more on board, raise the energy even higher by using techniques such as opening up dialogue with the audience and also having material about the room itself. Two techniques used to get people feeling the same, which as an MC is what your job is about. More on that a little bit later. Then we move on to the clap and shear, a technique that has a section all to itself, because in my opinion, it is the most effective and important technique you will learn and you will use as an MC. This technique will not only guarantee you focus from the entire audience, but will also help you raise the energy in the room whenever you may need it. After that, I will give you a few little tips and tricks, things to have in mind when making the show run smoothly, what to have in mind when entering the stage between acts, how to keep the energy up and also we will look at what you need to do when an act might not connect with the audience and as a result the energy dies and also we will look at what to do when an act absolutely smashes it out the park and there is too much energy for everyone what to do in both those situations we are going to look at and then we move on to the next section which is entering the interval how to leave your audience wanting more and excited for the second section of the show to come then we look at opening the second section itself. This is the moment where you have more freedom to do your own material as the audience are already on your side. We'll look at the best ways of you being as creative here as possible and also gathering the energy from the beginning of the night that you worked hard to create and going onward from there. Next up, we have heckling and why it doesn't need to be such a scary scenario when and if it happens. We're gonna look at ways you can set yourself upright so you can be one step ahead of anyone who wants to heckle you and get the best out of the situation. After that, we are going to look at closing the show, the final section of the video. The best way of closing the show, how to leave everyone with a smile on their face, and if you are collecting a little bit of money at the end in a bucket, we're going to look at a few techniques to get the best out of that also. Before we dive into the actual night itself, it's really important you know ahead of time what style of MC you are going to be. MCing a night is all about knowing the perception of the audience towards what's going on on the stage. For example, if an act is doing some very offensive material and as a result losing some of the audience, you need to be aware of this happening. So when an act is on stage, you need to be watching very closely what the act is doing, what they're saying and how are the audience perceiving it. And the best way of knowing where the audience stand on such a thing is to know where you stand on it. The chances are if you find an act very offensive, the most of the audience are going to find the exact same. If you find an act very, very, very funny, absolutely smashing it out the park, that the chances are the audience are going to find the same as well. So here's what we're gonna do. First exercise of the video, grab your paper and pen, 
jot down exactly what character you're going to be when you're on stage. And you should do this if you're character act or not. The more you know how far you're willing to go with certain topics and issues, the quicker and easier it will be for you to access your performing persona. Sometimes we just don't feel like performing or we don't feel like emceeing. But having a journal jotted down of exactly who it is you are and what kind of a character you want to portray yourself as on stage makes it very easy to get into the right mind frame to be your best on stage. So take three to five minutes, write down who it is you are as an MC, as an act, and obviously the more often you return to this exercise and all of the exercises I have in this video, the brighter your imagination will become and the quicker you will be in real time situations. Okay, so we know exactly who it is we are as an MC, or at least we have a beginning of an understanding. So let's dive right in straight back to the beginning with the responsibilities and roles of the MC. The MC's position is the most responsible of the night. Three of the main things you are there for are as follows. The bar, the audience and the acts. The bar are looking to you to promote them in the correct way. They want your audience spending money at the bar and buying as many drinks as possible. If you are not successful with getting revenue up for the bar, the bar will not continue the night and all of your hard work establishing a new comedy club will be for nothing. Be prepared to promote the bar in the best way possible and keep in mind on the fact that one of your jobs as the front of house presence and the MC is to get the drink sales up for the bar. The second thing you are there for is the audience quite obviously. You are there to make sure every member of audience has the best time they possibly can and how you do that is you get them all feeling the same. The very reason people leave the house to go out and experience live comedy or any live performance for that matter, is because they want to feel connected to the audience they're in the room with. You are the spokesperson and leader of the pack and they will get behind you as a leader to make them all feel connected. That is exactly what this video is about, tips and techniques to make that happen. And the last thing and most important thing you as an MC are there for is for the acts. It has been said many times before that a sign of a good MC makes the acts feel like a million dollars. What exactly does that mean? If we change the saying a little bit, we have more of an understanding of exactly what it means. The job of an MC is to bring each act onto the stage with the same level of support, focus and attention from all members of the audience. Obviously, it's simply not fair if one act walks onto the stage with less support from the audience than the previous act did. So therefore, we'll say it again because it is important, the role of an MC is to bring every act onto the stage with the same high energy focus and support from every member of the audience. The front of house button is turned on from the moment you enter the building. This is a great time to check with the bar, make sure you are taking a note of anything they want promoted, any drink promotions, any coupons going, anything that you can tie into your night that will help them out. You guys working together is very, very important at this time. After that, you wanna make sure all the technical equipment is set up and ready to go. Everything should be done 45 minutes to an hour before doors open. Obviously, you want as much time before the doors open as possible to get yourself ready, get yourself in the right mind frame so that when doors open, you can focus on the most important thing at that time, which are your guests arriving. The front of house continues on through this process. As guests arrive into the building, they want to be greeted well. They want to be informed as to when the night's going to begin, what exactly they are in store for, and if this is done correctly, it nearly always results in the guests going straight to the bar to purchase their first drink of the night and get excited for, for the show that in hand. If the guests arrive and you're messing about fixing up chairs or messing around with a microphone lead, that results in them not being welcomed and they're going to be confused as to even if they're in the right venue. Worst case scenario, if they're not greeted correctly, they'll simply just turn around and walk back out the door and nobody wants that. Another great thing front of house presence does at the moment the guests arrive is to get them on your side from the very beginning. 
Obviously, the quicker you can get the audience on your side with who you are as the MC, the quicker it will be for you once you grab the microphone and open the introduction to the whole show. So this is kind of like a fast track to getting everybody on your side by you being ready when they enter the building and greeting them the correct way. Now we move on to showtime, the introduction to the entire show, the moment you grab the microphone. This is where people are going to hear what you sound like through the microphone for the first time. This is when the vibe of the show becomes very obvious to everyone. So here is where you want to have a very short introduction learnt off. The first thing you say on the microphone for approximately 45 seconds needs to be just a very simple welcome. You're giving your audience a little bit of time just to get used to how you sound and how you present yourself on the stage. And not only are you giving them time to suss out how you sound and how you present yourself, during this opening 45 seconds, you're also sussing out your audience. Who's got open energy and a smile on face and ready for a good time? And which audience member is going to need a little bit more work? If you're the kind of act to open up dialogue with the audience, the first 45 seconds is a really good time to suss out who's going to be the first person that you talk to. The first person you talk to needs to have very open energy, someone who clearly is enjoying the show already. By picking someone who's enjoying the show already and having open dialogue, it lets everyone who might be a little more closed off to the idea of talking to the MC that A, it's okay, nothing as bad is going to happen to you if you get involved in the show and speak back to the MC. Another thing the introduction does is let you figure out the energy at the very start of a show. Regardless of where the energy is at the very beginning, you need to bring it up ever so slightly, or even maybe a lot if the energy is very bad. If you take the microphone and the energy is already amazing, you still need to attempt to bring it up a little bit more. People need to show a little more commitment and the more commitment they show to you after your hard work, the more that puts you in charge as a leader. Don't worry though, we're going to talk exactly about how you do that over these next few moments. So our second exercise is the 45 second introduction to the show. This should be learnt off. And the reason it should be learnt off is because, as I've said before, while you're saying it, all it's doing is giving your audience a chance to understand who you are, what you're about at the very beginning of the show, get used to your tone of voice. Also, it gives you a moment to figure them out. Therefore, you cannot be thinking of the words coming out of your mouth. It's just going to distract you. So you should write down and learn off a very basic easy to understand, easy to remember introduction to the show. Use it every time. Obviously, you can write down multiple introductions, but the idea is the same. So take three to five minutes, write down a very, very basic 45 second, nice introduction that you can do in your style. Get it done now. Okay, I'm going to give you a few second break just to breathe. There is a lot of information coming at you. I understand that. If you haven't done so already, please do hit the like button. If you're still here, I know you're enjoying it. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Here we go, back into the workshop. One way of getting the audience feeling connected, feeling the same and acting the way you want them is to do material that you all have in common. And there are lots that you have in common with the audience. Most likely, the form of transport most of you took to the venue you have in common. You all probably had the same perception of the venue, of the bar staff and the room that you're doing the show in. By having material on all these subjects connects you to the audience because they've just experienced the same thing. By having funny observational material about the room you are in at that time is one of the most effective ways of bringing everyone together and making them feel the same. So that's another thing you should take note of when you enter the venue for the very first time in that night. Jot a few funny observational bits of material about the room that you can bring up later on during your introduction to get people feeling on side. So this brings us to our next section. I want you right this second to grab a pen and write down observational humorous material about your surroundings right this second, about the room you are now in. Obviously, the more environments you can do this exercise in, the better you will get at it. Go get it done, three to five minutes, write your 45 second introduction now. 
So, we know who we are as an MC. We've come to the venue. We've smashed their front of house presence. Their bar are happy. The audience are happy. They're sitting in place. We've just done our 45 second introduction on the microphone. Now we move on to the room work and the crowd work. I've already mentioned a little bit of information about crowd work, but I won't leave it there. Here is a few tips, techniques, and exercises to have you working the crowd in no time. This section is one that scares people a lot, especially people who don't have much crowd work experience or MC experience. And just like all the other sections, there is no reason to be afraid of this. Opening up dialogue with the audience is a hell of a lot of fun to do and can bring your night to lots and lots of great places. As long as you know how to get back on track, bring the night back to a center point again, you can't lose. So if you've got no experience opening up dialogue with an audience, here are a few things you can do right now, a few writing techniques to get you set up and get you one step ahead even before you have a show booked. I want you to take a piece of paper and down the left side, write as many different professions as you can think of. List them all down. As many different professions or job titles you can think of. And to the right of them, I want you to jot down as many different punchlines as you can think of. Obviously, knowing your punchlines ahead of time is going to help you when you open up dialogue with an audience. Because the chances are this, the professions and job titles you jotted down on a piece of paper are most likely going to come up in conversation if you were to open up dialogue with a large group of people. Obviously, having your punchline written out, learnt off, put you at already an incredible advantage. You can do the same for relationships. Write down all the different types of relationships and write down punchlines about relationships or about names or about appearances. It doesn't matter, you can be as creative as you possibly want. So the more you can do this, the more you see the possibilities opening up in front of you. If you learnt off even two punchlines for five different sections of what you could be talking about, well, imagine what kind of a stepping stone that would put you on if you were to open up dialogue with the audience. Another thing to remember when opening up that dialogue is sometimes the audience are going to be really funny. And let them. It's a comedy show after all. There is no problem if the audience are getting laughs. Everyone's there to have a good time. And by you letting the audience have the laugh shows that you are absolutely fine under that kind of pressure. Just like all the other sections in the show, this is one really important to have as much fun as you possibly can. If you're the kind of person who likes to chat to people, well then certainly have working the crowd as part of your MC persona. The more often you return to this exercise, writing out punchlines for different demographics, the better you will be in real life situations. And sooner or later, you won't need to do any exercise at all. You will have so many punchlines learnt off already in your head, and you'll also be able to improvise on the spot. Another thing about working the room is obviously you get better over time. The more you work a room, the better you will be at it. So I would stress if you're the kind of actor that does a lot of open mic gigs, I would stress that you should be booking open mic gigs for the sole purpose of working the room, if that's what you like to do, and if it's what you want to get better at. Don't be afraid to have a full five minute set where you just work the room, because as I say again, the more you do it, the better will you be. But with these exercises, at least you can be one step ahead of the game, even before you've ever done it before. So three to five minutes, do that now. Material about the room you are in. Okay, we are moving at speed, still quite a lot to get through. So we're going to keep going at this pace. Next, we move on to the clap and shear. The technique you are going to use time and time again to get all the focus and all the energy up to where you want it. This technique is done across the board in all different forms of performance. It's simply where the MC is going to get the audience to express as much energy as they possibly can after a certain countdown or a count up or whatever it may be. It goes something along the lines of this. I'm going to say three, two, one. When I say one, I want every single person in this room to make as much noise as possible. Clapping, cheering, screaming, whatever the hell you want, make it loud. Not yet in a moment. Three, two, one. When I say it, when I say one, every single person go as crazy as you possibly can. Are we ready? Here we go, guys. Three, two, one. Now, 
obviously you're screaming in your seat. It sounds a little bit weird when I do it in a room like this, but just to get the idea, here is a quick clip of it done live. Ladies and gentlemen, I like to come out here and just start talking and just kind of see where the energy is going. It smells on faces already, we're going to be in for a lovely night. However, the night itself and all the acts and the whole vibe and the whole coming, us coming together like a collective deserves a lot more than that. I know how to make us come together even more, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to say three, two, one in a moment. When I say three, two, one in a moment, everyone here is going to put your hands together and make a lot of noise, right? What that does is it makes us all feel the same. When we all feel the same, we all feel absolutely fantastic. Fantastic, and that is a perfect ingredient to having a fantastic night here at Comedy Stick. So, ladies and gentlemen, get ready for it. Three, two, one. Let's go! So, what's happening here? The message is very, very easy to understand. When I say one, everyone's going to make as much noise as possible in the form of clapping or cheering. Everybody will understand that in the room, and it's something that everyone will enjoy doing but I mentioned it a few times before I let them actually do it. By just teasing it a little bit at the beginning, not too much, just a little bit, heightens the tension just enough so that when they finally do give the energy, it's very, very loud. Another thing is the countdown is crystal clear. The pattern of speech in this setup cannot be interrupted. If it's interrupted, the whole tension of the entire bit will disappear and you will not get the desired effect from the audience afterwards. So yet again, this is only about a 20 second piece that you're going to say on the microphone, somewhere around the 15 to 25 second mark is absolutely perfect just enough to give them the information for what they want to do stop them say not yet give them the information again make sure they're all ready and then at the count let them scream as loud as they possibly can so here's what you're going to do grab that pen again it's another exercise you are going to write out your clap and cheer patter. Feel free to scroll back, look at my video, take whatever the hell you want, as long as you can get your first clap and cheer out onto that paper. Come back to the clap and cheer, change it, make it funny, make it more punchy, whatever you want to do with it, as long as you remember to keep the language using very, very simple. You want people to be on board, you want to create that little bit of tension, and you want them to act as loud as possible. So go do that right now. A few little notes about the clap and cheer. You want to make sure when you finally get the reaction that it's loud enough. If it's clear that a lot of people didn't join in, you want to simply repeat the process. Maybe a smaller version of it, but you definitely want to repeat. If it's very clear that a lot of people were not joining in with the clap and the cheer when they were asked to, well, it's very important that you repeat the process again. Go straight back into the clap and cheer, repeat what you said by simply starting with that wasn't loud enough. Repeat exactly what it was you said and then you will most likely get the desired effect. Another thing to remember, if they do give the desired effect the very first time, well then you should move on with the show. Don't get them to repeat it again if everyone has given you a loud response. Because what will most likely happen in that situation is the second time you ask for it, it won't be as loud as the first time. And by continuing on with the show afterwards, it's a very confusing message you're sending to the audience. So if it's up to your standard and the energy is correct, move on, don't need to repeat it again. If there's a few people clearly not playing ball, don't be afraid to repeat it again. Assert yourself as the leader of the pack. Everyone will appreciate it in return and you'll get the desired effect you want with the clap and cheer you have now written out that you will be going back to to make punchy the better you get at it. So think about how far you have now come as an MC. You've started writing your journal and you know who it is you are developing as, as the MC. You also know how to do your front of house presence and what you should be looking out for before doors even open. Also, you know how to greet the guests, you know how to open your show, the vital 45 second introduction, how to use the room and the audience, opening up material with both, and as a result, getting the audience on side with you, and also the clap and cheer, which you can come back to time and time again. Everybody likes to be involved in it as an audience, and it's a lot of fun to play with creatively 
as an MC. So let's move on to the next few sections. But before we do that, I got a little tip for you. Being an MC is all about taking note of small little detail that's happening on stage, something for you to be able to bring up in conversation before you bring the next act on. And why you do that? Well, if you bring up something in the room in conversation and keep repeating that process, you will get everybody on board feeling the same. And therefore, that's a good recipe for success. Bring the next act on accordingly. So here's a tip. Let's say there's an act on stage and you want to say a little bit of something about their material. Or you want to take note of something the audience said to an act. Or something that happened in the room, it doesn't really matter. You can't be writing every single thing that you want to mention on stage on the back of your hand. There's simply going to be too much text on your hand and it's going to go up your arm and you're going to look like an idiot. A little technique I have come up with is to have a piece of paper and on the piece of paper, jot down what it is you want mentioned on stage, rip it up and then palm it in your hand. By walking up onto the stage now, having the microphone in your hand and talking, you can imagine and feel the paper in your hand. And it's kind of a way of no remembering easier what it was you said, because you just wrote it down on the piece of paper and you can feed it in your hand. If you do forget what you wrote down, by simply glancing at your hand, which is absolutely fine to do, get you back on board, knowing exactly where you are in the show again and ready to proceed. And of course, when you leave the stage, you just throw it in the bin. Little tip from me to you to allow you to be able to jot down pieces of information throughout the entire night to keep you in charge and keep you remembering everything. And that about wraps it up for the first part of this workshop. I hope you've enjoyed it so far and I hope you've been taking notes. I will see you on part number two. Hit the link on the screen, get right back into the workshop.